G'day, Justin Hogg from RightSource here, talking all things governance and culture. So we've started off a couple of sessions talking about board culture and how having an understanding of governance and the tools that are available to you can help align your corporate culture and really affect board culture. So just as a quick intro, I mean, what is culture? And it's very, it's very elusive and very hard to define at a board level, though I think uh, when you read anything about board culture, unanimously, it's highly important. But what is it? Very hard to define. Simplistically, I define culture as behavior and beliefs and how we interact. So really what this set of uh, sessions that we're doing on board culture is looking at how we can use governance and the tools that governance provides you to help you manage the culture of your organization and manage the culture that's happening at the board level so that you can have a, a purposeful culture that aligns with what you want to achieve as an organization. So let's dive in. So we talked about uh, motivation last time we spoke. Uh, what I want to talk today about is legacy. Legacy is a really interesting topic when it comes to the board. Now, what again, what is legacy? Legacy, um, if you look at a, a, a dictionary definition, is something that is handed down from the past or handed down from someone. So it's, it's handing down something and usually something of value not always it can be something that's not good but it's handing something down so when we look at that from a board perspective and especially the directors on the board you always want the, there's a part of when you start as a director the same as when you start a business or start anything that's of, of value that you do you often start with the end in mind so what is it that when i get to the end of this journey what do i want to achieve what do i want to leave for those that come after me. So this is a really interesting topic that really isn't talked a lot about at boards. And when you have direct rotation, you have, you know, direct, everything comes to an end. So directorships come to an end, chairs come to an end. What does that look like and how does that work? Having an idea of that and working through your, your board is really important because it helps capture the legacy that you actually want to leave and do that meaningfully. So how does governance help with all this? Well, if we look at things like, so board rotation is one thing. So if there is a clear time that you're on a board, that helps with the planning process. So if you are, you know, maximum term is nine years or something like that, well then people know that even if they start now in nine years time, that'll be it they know when the end is. So that allows a bit of planning. With the planning side of things, your succession planning, so having a succession plan in place, having a skills matrix in place, that's important because then you know what stuff is, what, who you need to recruit. Again, that allows to make sure that you know, things are passed on. So if you lose someone with a certain skill set, you, you're bringing someone else on so that they can continue that and continue the legacy. Plus also then your recruitment process to bring on the right people. So. One, when you start talking about this at a board level, one of the really interesting things that's brought up is how do we stop the next lot of people destroying what we've built? So this is protecting a legacy. How do you protect a legacy? And that's really, it is hard and there's no guarantees in how you can do it. I can't say definitively this is how you protect it, but what you do look for is where you have governance processes in place, where you have, you know, making sure you recruit the right people, that you know what skills you want, um, by putting, the, giving it the best chance of finding the best replacement for those that you currently have on the board, gives you your best chance of continuing the legacy, maintaining that legacy. So that's a really important tool in terms of governance and legacy. But that's not even the fun bit. So that's a bit mechanical in terms of how you, you know, rotate your directors through. Having that in place then also allows you to have hard conversations when they come up. Now. Why would you have hard conversations? Well, here's a couple of examples. Sometimes when a director takes on the chair position, it can change how they perceive their position on the board. And all of a sudden they start acting as the boss of the board. So the chair is absolutely the figurehead of the board and of the, organi of the organization, but is supposed to facilitate the board. It's not necessarily, their director is the same as everybody else. Sometimes when directors take on that chair position, they step up and think, well, now I'm the boss of the board. That can be problematic. What's more problematic is if that chair needs to be 
moved on. That their time is done, and especially if you don't have a um, a fixed time that a chair or director's in place, boards can get stuck with a chair that feels that this is their organization and they want to continue being the chair because that gives them whatever it is that's motivating them to be there and that's why they want to do it. But it can have detrimental effects to culture. It can be not allowing that diversity to flow through. It can hold the organization stuck in a rut by having the governance processes in place so that everyone's clear about how long people are there, what the succession planning is, how that all happens, helps prevent that situation occurring where one person believes that they are in control of the organization as opposed to the group being in control and working for the best of the organization. So that's the first real interesting thing and obviously, that has implications on culture. The other one that has implications on culture is probably even further, and would be interesting for those who are founders out there, is where you have a founder on the board. Um, and sometimes this is, you know, they set this whole thing up, and especially if it's a very successful organization. A founder can feel like, well, this is, this is theirs, even though, especially with a lot of the not-for-profit structures and charity structures, it isn't theirs. That's sort of part of the point. It's, it belongs to the purpose. But there can be that feeling, well, I set this up, this organization is built around my drive to fix to, for this purpose. And to work out a way that you can pull that individual out of the organization without destroying the organization, without harming the organization, can be a very treacherous path to, to follow. And if you don't have some of the tools that are in place from a governance perspective, it can actually destroy the organization. So when that founder leaves or needs to leave for either voluntarily or, you know, if they get sick or if they have to, if, if they're asked to leave, that one instance could destroy the whole organization because there isn't, there isn't the planning, there isn't the ability to pass that legacy to someone else to continue into, into the future. So with founders, it's very important to start building in some of that governance, get them, I mean, they need to be on board with it as well. That's the whole point. You wanna do this in a, in a measured way, in a way that allows them to feel that their legacy is, is passed on and is, is recognized to a fair extent, whilst giving them the comfort that what they set the organization up to do with in the first place is gonna to continue to be done without them having to oversee it in that detailed a way. They're still involved, but you know, allows someone else to then take the torch and run with the torch. So when we talk about legacy and boards and how that affects culture, what we're really trying to do is make sure that as there's transition, culture isn't hurt, the organization isn't hurt, and that the, the, govern the tools that are in place help protect that. But also that we're, you know, holding the legacy that's passed down and being able to understand that legacy, we implicitly give recognition to the work done of those done have come before us. So I think that's a really important part and that respect and that integrity that then flows through into the culture of the organization. So understanding that you know, people aren't here forever, but we value their contribution while, we're, while they're here and we're gonna continue that contribution, continues to add value after they've gone. So that's really a talk about legacy and culture and governance. Um, I hope you enjoyed that today. I, I actually find that a really interesting topic uh, when talking with boards. If you enjoyed what you saw and heard today, um, definitely check out YouTube. We've got a number of videos on there uh, in terms of governance and not-for-profit. Otherwise, thank you again for sharing your time with me today. It's been Justin Hock from RightSource.